Good afternoon. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you, Eve, for organizing this. I really appreciate it. You and your volunteers. I have been researching pyramids and megalithic sites for the last 40 years. And I have concluded that almost everything they teach us about the ancient history is wrong. <laughs> the origin of man, civilizations, and pyramids. The pyramids they teach us in schools that they were built in Egypt and Mexico. And that's wrong. They were built on all six continents. For Egyptian pyramids, we have been programmed to think that they were built as tombs for the pharaohs. According to non-scientific Wikipedia and non-scientific Encyclopedia Britannica, there are 118 pyramids in Egypt. Wrong. There are 155 I have visited and investigated all of them. Not a single pyramid has a mummy. <laughs> Mummies were, of course, discovered in the Valley of Kings, which is 600 kilometers to the south from the Giza Plateau, near Luxor, Karnak, then in Thebes, Memphis, Abydos, Dandera, the capitals of ancient Egypt, but not in the pyramids. These are three most magnificent Egyptian pyramids. They call them the Great Pyramid of Egypt, or Cheops, or Khufu. Cheops was the pharaoh of the fourth dynasty. 4,550 years back, he did not have tools, means, design to make something like this. And then, Egyptologists are telling us that his brother, or his son, Catherine, built the second largest pyramid, and Michaelinos, his grandson, the third one. From the outside, we don't see who really built them. Inside, beautiful passageways. This way they call Grand Gallery. We can see granite blocks. Granite brought from the Aswan, 869 kilometers to the south. Chambers. The biggest block in the Chamber of Chaos Pyramid is 80 tons. The biggest one in Kafre, 220 tons. Imagine to move 220 tons from the Aswan, 870 kilometers to the Giza Plateau. They are telling us it was done by boats. When the Japanese built a replica of ancient Egyptian boats and they placed Two ton block. <laughs> it sunk <laughs> to the river Nile at the bottom of it. No mummies, no paintings, no hieroglyphic writings, no symbols, no tools, no organic materials, not a single proof who, when, how, and why. The history will show that claims by Egyptologists, and of course behind them, elites from London, Berlin, Paris, nowadays Washington, it will show that claims by them about Egyptian pyramids being tombs of the pharaohs is the biggest hoax in history. Let's take a look at the Great Pyramid of Egypt. From this end to that end, 231 meters. Two lengths, 462. Divided by height, 147. The result is 3.14. Number pi. Officially, this number will not be known to the humanity in another 2,000 years from the fourth dynasty. Only ancient Greek mathematicians got a good idea about the number pi. 
In this period, number three, 1.618, the golden section has been incorporated. In this period, the distance between our planet and the sun, the distance between our planet and the moon, the speed of light. The ancient Egyptians did not have this knowledge. The most important artifacts from ancient Egypt is not even in Egypt. For me, it is the Turin King List in Turin, Italy. Papyrus, 1 meter 70 centimeters, 45 centimeters wide, with 11 columns that gives the names of all the rulers of Egypt. We have three phases. The first phase, gods, with a small g. The second phase, demigods or semi-gods. The third phase, sons of gods. And that's exactly how the Egyptian rulers, as we know them, call themselves. They did not call themselves pharaohs or kings, sons of gods. The first dynasty, second, third, fourth, fifth, twelfth, nineteenth. And they would rule two years, ten years, twenty years, if they got lucky like Ramses the second, sixty-seven years. They were human. <coughs> But the second phase was the era of demigods. They would rule Egypt 200 years and 300 years each. And the first phase, gods. It is said that the gods descended from kingdom of heaven to kingdom of earth. And they started ruling the earth 41,000 years ago. And those gods would rule Egypt 1,000 years each. Of course, if you were a normal human living 30 years or 40 years or even 50 years, you were looking at the same ruler all your life. And your son, same ruler. And your grandson, same ruler. And grandson of your grandson, all the same ruler. For, of course, for them, they were gods, immortal. If they really lived 1,000 years, they probably had technology to build those magnificent pyramids. Even more important artifact is a little bit to the east, Sumerian king list. Go to Wikipedia, you can find even this document. Also, several phases. Gods, lesser gods, children of gods. Children of gods are rulers from Sumeria, as we know them, through the archaeological digging. We find the artifacts, we find the names. Lesser gods would rule Sumeria 1,000 years each, and that phase perfectly matched the same era in Egypt. But the first, the gods, in ancient Sumer, it is said that they came 273,600 years ago. Alulim ruled Sumeria 28,800 years. Alaja 36,000 years. 3,000 in average. What do we know about the history of our planet? 224 Nubian pyramids, northern Sudan, 43 pyramids on the island of Sicily, Italy, volcanic stone, one step pyramid in Sardinia, 104 pyramids on Canary Islands, most of them Tenerife, again, volcanic stone, seven pyramids on the island of Mauritius in the middle of the Indian Ocean, volcanic stone. One of the most beautiful examples of Mayan pyramid architecture, the Kukukan pyramid in Chichen Itza in Mexico, step pyramid. Very similar pyramid, seven tier pyramid in Cambodia, Koch Ker pyramid. Four sides, triangular faces, perfect orientation to the cardinal points, east, west, north, and south. 
energy potent construction materials, vulcanic stone, iron, energy, sandstone, quartz crystal, amplifies the energy. On the sides, we have artificial lakes connected by canals, water move, kinetic energy. From the top, passageways going straight down, two chambers under the pyramid, no artifacts, they were resonance chambers. So as I've been traveling the world, I realized Pyramids have something to do with the energy. The Mayan civilization that lived in what we today call the countries of Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, and Belize, built more than 100,000 pyramids. This one has been considered the biggest one for the longest time. It's called it it's called structure number five in Tikal, Guatemala. However, much bigger was pyramid. Much bigger pyramid was discovered in El Mirador. That's a new city in Guatemala. And here is the biggest pyramid, completely covered by forest. You can also see the top of some of the temples. 97% of the Mayan cities, towns, villages, pyramids, temples, terraces, bridges, roads are covered by vegetation, forests, they are in a jungle. What do we know about the civilization based on 3%? Encyclopedia Britannica seems to know everything. They claim the Mayans were Neolithic. Culture. Neolithic? It's a Stone Age culture. Oh, really? Their architecture, construction, advanced astronomy, sophisticated calendars, 21 of them, math, sacred geometry, were very advanced. They were a civilization. They were not at the Stone Age level. Encyclopedia Britannica, by the way, 50 years ago, claimed that the humanity and advanced civilizations are 3,500 years old, Sumerians. 30 years ago, they changed it to 5,000. 10 years ago, they changed it to 6,500. Eventually, they will come to real truth. Hundreds of thousands of years, presence of different advanced civilizations. If this pyramid is clear, it should look like this. La Venta, Mexico. Jungle was clear, and the pyramid was discovered, still covered, the soil and the grass. Four-sided pyramid. And nobody questioned if it is a pyramid or not. It's normal, it is a pyramid, the structure. The most artistic man city, Palenque, in the Mexican state of Chiapas, 25 pyramids have been uncovered, like this one here, Temple of Inscriptions. But originally they had 1,229 pyramids. And the biggest one is this one right here. <laughs> the Mexican authorities, through their famous Institute for Anthropology and History, does not have intention to clear this one. Why? Maybe because it is the oldest one. No, it doesn't change our perception of history. They are teaching us before we were primitive, and with the time, we are where we are here today. The most advanced, the most intelligent, the most beautiful. Are we? The biggest one. The one next to it, partially. Uncovered. 1967, the Chinese archaeologist went to Japan and he announced that 250 pyramids are located in the central province of Shanxi. He said that clay tablets were discovered, he partially deciphered them, 20 biggest pyramids were built 12,500 years ago. He came back to China, 
They put him into the mental hospital, <laughs> and nobody heard about him no more. Why? Officially, the Chinese state is 2,300 years old. Everything started with the Emperor Qin, who united seven Chinese provinces in one country. He built the Great Chinese Wall. He started the new currency. And now, because of pyramids, we need to go back for 10,000 years. The Chinese Communist government does not want that. And the poor guy, back in 1967, the first year of the famous Chinese cultural revolution. If you had opinion different than the mainstream, you wouldn't have a good time. <laughs> that was 60 years ago. Has much changed today? What the Chinese government did, they planted the trees on top of the pyramids, wanted to hide them from the world. So they are still covered by soil and vegetation. And when I spoke to the Chinese colleagues, they told me they will not be getting permissions in another generation. 30 years. Gunupada. The Hill of Light, Western Java, Indonesia. A friend, Dr. Danny Hillman, back in 2006, discovered the pyramid in the jungle, which is four sided, triangle faces, the height 100 meters. Originally, it probably looked like this. He did radiocarbon dating of the material he discovered, 28,000 years old pyramid. It was a shock. Indonesians, archaeologists, geologists, historians asked the government to stop the project, which they did. So, for the last 18 years, no progress. It is changing the history of the whole continent. What is the problem with the new dates? No problem for me. But it seems that the elites want us to think that we are the first civilization, that we are still in infantile stage, baby stage. If you're a baby, you need nourishment, and who is there to lead you? Small group of people, corporate elites, political elites, religious elites. <laughs> this is the look of the best known Mexican pyramid. It is called the Pyramid of the Sun in the city of Teotihuacan, 170 years back, completely covered by forest and vegetation. It took four long archaeological campaigns for Mexican and American archaeologists to completely uncover it. And this is how it looks like today. One of the most beautiful examples of the pyramid architecture, when you are looking from the base, people who are climbing the top they are becoming so tiny. It seems that the builders wanted to reach the sky. And indeed, impressive, 74 meters. Interestingly enough, it's exactly two times lower than the Great Pyramid of Egypt, which is two times higher. The length of the Egyptian pyramid, 231 meters. The land of Mexican, 231 meters. In Egyptian pyramid, we have number pi. In Mexican, square root of number pi. Three major pyramids in the Giza Plateau, Cheops, Kefra, Michaelinos. Three major pyramids here in Teotihuacan, Sun, Moon, Quetzalcoatl, and their layout is exactly the same. They're teaching us in schools that there was no communication between continents thousands of years back. And here we can see the signature of the same architect. Almost everything they teach us in schools about the ancient history is wrong. They don't tell us about the pyramids in the United States of America. 
They were located from Wisconsin to the north, all the way down to Mexico and in the Louisiana. But most of them that survived Smithsonian teams from the 19th century are located in the southwestern corner of the Illinois in the so-called Cahokia National Park. 120 step pyramids. American archaeologists call them Cahokia Mounds. Mound is when you take dirt, soil, and you play with it. But here, when building the biggest one, they used four types of construction materials. Shaped sandstone blocks, pebbles, rocks, and sand. And they built a structure that has a surface for 11% larger than the Great Pyramid of Egypt. Now, you would expect that the Americans make a new Las Vegas out of it and make billions of dollars. When I talked to the archaeologist at the site, I asked him if they did any archaeological digging, did they find any passageways and chambers? He said no. I said, why not? He said, oh, it's very hard to get permission to dig. I said, what do you mean? This is the government land, the government national park, the government pyramids, the government museum at the site. You are the government employees. It would be very simple to get permission. But he said, yeah, but archaeology is very expensive. I said, this is the United States, the only world superpower. <laughs> you go to the museum at the site, which was built back in 1970 and cost $20 million. Today it's $200 million. So much about money. You can see that the museum is filled with the replicas of half-naked Indians. They try to convince us these Indians are builders of this. <coughs> Indians were nomads. They moved with the food. They never built fixed structures. He's not Indians, white Europeans for sure not, and who changed the history of the U.S. and A. In April of 2005, I first traveled to the Bosnian town of Visoko to visit the local museum. And then I saw this. Everybody called it a natural hill because it is covered soil, bushes, and forest, which was planted back in 1960s and 1970s. But I was looking at the geometry, at the shape. In front of me, one side. To the left, second side. To the right, third. In the back, fourth. We have four sides. In front of us, one triangular face. Here is the second triangular face, number three, number four. We have four corners. From here we see three of them. One corner, two, three. In the back is number four. We have the same slope from bottom to the top and flat sides. Geometrically speaking, very clearly, this is four-sided pyramid. At that time I took compass. Compass showed me that this side is perfectly oriented to the north. The one in the back South, east, west. Mother Nature does not make hills with four sides, four triangle faces, four corners, and perfect orientation, but intelligent hands. Back in 2005, at that time I lived in the United States, in Houston, Texas, I said, let me go back, let me do some preliminary research. So I asked for permission as the physical person, I got it from the Ministry of Culture. We were doing geological core drilling, archaeological trenches, lab analysis. Everything we did, they were telling us anomaly, anomaly. Meaning, it is not made by nature through geological processes. I wrote the book, 
And I had a big press conference in October of 2005 in Sarajevo, capital of Bosnia and Herzegovina, and I announced the news that the first European pyramids had been discovered in the town of Visoko. And then I went to the Department of Archaeology at the University of Sarajevo. I said, hey, you have the pyramids, let's go together and let's collaborate, let's search, let's dig, very enthusiastically. They said, no, 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 we have no pyramids. <laughs> we know every square meter of Bosnia and no pyramids. We don't know 90% what is below the ground, which cultures live there. I said, fine. I went to the National Museum. I offered them collaboration. They said, no, 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 no. We never had pharaohs in Bosnia. <laughs> Therefore, we cannot have pyramids. So I realized, I'm talking to the people who lived in the 19th century. I established non-profit, non-government foundation under the name Archaeological Park Bosnia and Pyramid of the Sun Foundation and registered it for the archaeology, science, and the archaeological tourism. And we started working. Wherever we were digging, for example, this place here was important, place where two sides meet, north and east. We moved one meter of soil and discovered the corner, 90 degrees corner. Mother Nature does not make that. Every other spot, when we removed one meter of soil, we are discovering a structure very strong structure under very soft soil. This is not a natural stratigraphy. This is our trench number 4C. So, one meter of soil, and then we got blocks. This one here is rectangular in geometry, very regular geometry. It has flat top, it has break at 90 degrees, flat side, break, at 90 degrees, flat bottom. It has six flat sides, six breaks at 90 degrees. Mother Nature does not make blocks like this one here. <laughs> However, geologists are saying, oh, it's a classical example of natural geological block. I said, how is it classical? Then they said, you know, before we had glaciers and they were moving from the top. I said, yes. They can make one flat size. But how about the other one and the third one, one more? This is not what the glaciers do. Four and a half meters, one and a half, 45 centimeters, eight tons. Next to this one is next one, the next. And below is the second row of blocks. Below the third row of blocks and the fourth row of blocks. This is a structure. Mother Nature does not construct, but intelligent hands. So, we took samples and sent them to seven institutes for materials. Polytechnico di Torino, Turin, Italy. Geopolymer Institute in France, Professor Davidovic. Czech Republic, Slovakia, Bosnia, they all told us that it was uh, an artificially made concrete. Some people call it a geopolymer concrete, some people call it synthetic concrete. But it's artificially made, as we could see. <coughs> if it is concrete, you can determine the quality of concrete. Our concretes today have hardness from 10 to 60 megapascals. Harder the concrete, more durable, better quality. 60, made in Germany, made in the US. But concrete from the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun goes from 73 to 155 megapascals. We cannot, using our technology, produce such good quality concrete. The second element for the quality is the water absorption. If water can get inside the concrete, it freezes. And ice has a tendency to expand and concrete breaks. So our norms are very strict. They allow up to 3% for good commercial concrete. 
This one is only 1% superior. The best quality concrete ever. Do we have any Bosnians or people from Balkan here tonight? Anybody? 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 One? Two? Three? Four? Well, if you wonder why Bosnians are even today excellent construction workers, <laughs> wonder no more. <laughs> <laughs> so far we have uncovered thousands of tons of the best quality concrete by removing one meter of soil and exposing it. Today we used cement as the binder for the concrete. They used this brownish material, melted clay, and they got the better quality than what we can make today. They were always using natural construction materials. If we would like to change the color of today's green pyramid to the color of the real pyramid. So instead of green, we use the color of concrete, brownish, keeping the same shape and geometry. And this is what we are getting. Original look of the Bosnian pyramid of the sun. Then, during the time when it was made. Today, <coughs> Four. Today <laughs> and maybe tomorrow, <laughs> if enough funds and will in Bosnia like this. From this point up, 220 meters, the Great Pyramid of Egypt, 147. So back in 2005, when I wrote my book, I said this is at least 220 meters. In the meantime, we got the correct number. Just by looking this corner and this eastern slope, you see how it goes? It's the same slope all the way to the bottom of the valley. Well, the problem is, of course, the forest, the houses. Well, there is a technology. It's called the LIDAR, or LIDAR technology, where you fly with the airplane several times above the pyramid, laser machine, laser rays, they go in between the branches and the leaves, they hit the ground, so we know exactly how the ground looks like and the shape of it. So you can remove the greenery, we can remove the building. So, look at now the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. 220 meters is from here, up. However, the corner goes all the way down to the bottom of the valley. Here's the eastern slope. Here's the northern slope. So, the real height, 368 meters. And the Great Pyramid of Egypt is still at 147. <laughs> the biggest ever. The orientation, traveling China, Indonesia, Cambodia, Sudan, Egypt, Peru, Cahokia, I realized that the pyramids are oriented to the north, to the true north, to the cosmic north. So far we thought that the best orientation is the Great Pyramid of Egypt. Error from perfect north is zero degrees and three minutes. Now, imagine, you have the length of the side of 231 meters, and it's like two football stadiums, one next to each other, and the error is zero degrees and three minutes. Nothing. Kefren, zero degrees, three minutes. Mikarinos, zero degrees, 18 minutes. Ben, pyramid in Dashu, zero degrees, 12 minutes. A red pyramid, zero degrees, five minutes. Builders of Egyptian pyramids, very, very advanced. The team of three engineers of geodesy from the State Institute for Geodesy from Bosnia, K 
came to the Bosnia and Pirazasan two times. They done measurements using total station scientific instruments. The error of the northern side from the perfect north is zero degrees, zero minutes, and 12 seconds. <coughs> the most precise ever. We have 660 meters length at the base. It's like five football stadiums next to each other. And zero, zero, twelve. The most precise ever. Under the pyramids, <coughs> in Egypt, in China, in Peru, in Mexico, we have underground tunnels. For example, Giza Plateau. We have four levels of tunnels, but they are not open to the public. Why? Well, those tunnels were part of the pyramids, the whole structure, the whole complex. And those tunnels were flooded 12,000 years ago, meaning the pyramid complex is much older than 4,500 years, more than 12,000. And at the time, we're going to get to the period between 30 and 40,000 the period of gods. But in Bosnia, we have, as you would expect, the most extensive, the largest underground tunnel network. So far, we have discovered seven entrances to the tunnels. <coughs> cleared more than three and a half kilometers of prehistorical tunnels. And this is maybe only 3% of their real length. I suspect that the tunnels on different levels are at least 100 kilometers. These are the Rame tunnels. Here we cleared about 2.5 kilometers. How many of you visited Rame tunnels? How many? Oh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, mm -hmm. about 20, 10%. Thank you very much. And for the rest of you, you got the message. <laughs> KPK tunnels, discovered in 2006. Height up to three and a half meters. Rame two tunnels, look like a cave. We enter inside, we could see about 25 meters of artificially made tunnels. Rame three tunnels, this is the volunteer crew with us who helped us discover those tunnels. This is how they look like. So what we do, we remove this filler material and move on. These are some of the artifacts that we discovered in the first prospection. We have ceramic, and we have some tools from 1,800 years back. And then we discovered more and more. Just in Rame three tunnels, we discovered 3,300 artifacts. Mostly ceramic pieces, but some metal pieces as well. From different time periods. Late Middle Age, early Middle Age, Byzantine times, ancient Roman times, Neolithic times, 6,000 years. Now, they don't belong to the builders, but it tells us that some of the sections of the tunnel network were open. This one, about 60 meters. And then the people were getting inside during different era, leaving their belongings. Now, there are people who claim that Osman Nagic is digging tunnels himself. <laughs> 100 kilometers. <laughs> and then he's closing, he's shutting down all the tunnels, bringing the filler material. So I guess I was planting thousands of artifacts started during the night when nobody was looking. <laughs> Rame three tunnels, archaeologists, archaeologists, some of the volunteers. Rame four tunnels, also about 65 meter open section that we discovered. Now, in Rame three tunnels, we are discovering stalagmites. For stalagmites, you have to have ceiling, stalactites, water dropping, <coughs> empty space, and then stalagmite starts growing. 
Good thing about it, you can date it. You can get to its age. So what we did, we sent 10 samples of different stalagmites, small and big, from different places in the tunnels to several institutes to get the age. Some of the stalagmites were here on this plate and here above this drywall. If they are above the drywall, it means drywall is older and stalagmite is younger. So let's see. One stalagmite was 3,520 years plus 950 years old. Another one, 2,500. Another one, 3,800. Another one, 3,070. Another one, 26,200. 26,200 years? Another one, 10,600. So the tunnels has been in existence for at least 26,200 years. Some people will argue, okay, but radiocarbon dating is not so precise, it can be off 10%, 20%. Okay. We've done uranium thorium analysis at the Institute of Geology of the Czech Academy of Sciences in Prague. 19,000 plus minus 1,000, 15,000 plus minus 1,000. In science, this is called the consistency. We consistently are getting very old age of the tunnels. There are five tunnels, very high. You see here, like an empty space, so we are removing the filler material. There are six tunnels. Just a few months back, we discovered one more. In the hill, in our beautiful park, we tried, it was a suspect, suspecting place for us. Here, we tried to dig here, we couldn't find anything. But then we discovered this conglomerate block. And we remember, those blocks were always used as the ceiling, and below they would make a tunnel. So we started digging below, and we discovered the entrance. Among others, those young people, 16 to 19 years old, they were helping us as volunteers removing the soil and look at the muddy land. But they were very happy because they witnessed something magnificent, discovery of big historical tunnels. We went through this hole inside and voila, we discovered 70 meters of open empty section. And to the left, there was a tunnel closed with the drywalls. To the right, another one drywalls, many drywalls, just in this one section. This season, starting June, and then July, August, September, October, we are again bringing volunteers to help us excavate. Anybody can volunteer here tonight. You got a little flyer. On the bottom of the flyer, it gives you the website, bosnianpyramids.ba, BA, Boston. And you can come, try, you can, Work with us three days, six days, two weeks, two months. You will like it. <laughs> the next element for the pyramids, sacred geometry. What are the elements of sacred geometry? Number one, equilateral triangle. There's a triangle with the same size, same length of the size, inner angles, 60 degrees. The next one, hexagon, six sides. The next one, number pi, 3.14. The next one, number phi, golden section, 1.618. The next one, Fibonacci spiral. These are elements of sacred geometry, and the ancients were incorporating them in the megalithic and pyramid structures around the world. They knew secrets that we don't. You have sacred geometry, you have movement of the energy. This is the top of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun, this one here. When we connect it to the top of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Moon, it's 2.2 kilometers. From the Moon, the Pyramid of Dragon, 2.2, from Dragon, back to the Sun, 2.2 kilometers. This is an equilateral trunk. 
green, sun, moon, dragon, which I just mentioned, the red, top of the pyramid of love, top of the temple of under earth, enters the canon, river Ponsa, triangle, the green of triangle, sexist woman, great element, ley line, the ancient God is sun, the new our planet, somehow, better than we do, so you put all The place for us is we have bed about Hartman intersection. Uh, we can sleep well, we are awake most of the night, next morning very tired. Hartman intersection. Curry grid, Schneider's grid, ley lines. Well, ley lines are beneficial to us. Good source of the energy. In the UK, in southern England, they've been investigating ley lines. And what they concluded was that on the straight lines, about those energy potent lines, we have majority of today's churches and cathedrals. As we know, in the late and in the early Middle Age, the church builders were destroying previous temples using the material. And the temple builders were destroying previous paganic structures. And pagans were destroying previous megalithic structures who were there first. Megalithic circles, megalithic spirals, always energy potent material. It can be granite, it can be volcanic stone, but always energy potent and very often with the high content of the quartz crystal. Ley lines. This is the map of the ley lines in the Central Balkan region. Eastern Croatia, Western Serbia, part of Montenegro, and the heart-shaped Bosnia. Red lines, north-south, ley lines, east-west, diagonal, diagonal. So most of them are intersecting right here. This is the place. So it is not the capital city of Sarajevo, but the town of Visoko, where the pyramids are located. How did they know? Astronomical properties. The ancients were always looking at the sky. Movement of our sun, which they rightfully called Father, it was leaving us then and now, life, warmth, light, information, life. So, during the summer solstice, during the winter solstice, during the fall equinox, during the spring equinox, four lunar phases, certain star constellations as well. On the most important day for the ancient builders, the day when Sun is the strongest, and it is exactly above our head at 90 degrees to the sky. Day of summer solstice, June 21st, the day when our mother planet is the healthiest. That day, we find the top of the Bosnian pyramid of the sun and watching the movement of the shadow of the pyramid. Sun moves on the horizon, shadow of the sun pyramid moves in the valley, and just before the sunset, the shadow forms another pyramid, basically <coughs> triangular, next to the western slope of the Bosnian pyramid of the moon, which is still covered by forest. The height of the shadow, exactly the same like the height of the moon pyramid, and the shadow is touching the foundation of the moon pyramid. The message is, this is where we started building it. The hot summer, August, we still follow the shadow of the sun pyramid, going towards the moon pyramid. Afternoon, evening, the sun is setting just before the sunset. The shadow completely covers the moon pyramid. 
and the top of the shadow touches the top of the moon pyramid. The message of the builders, the rule of the day and the sun is over. And the rule of the night and the moon starts. Genius. Our uh, wonderful athlete, friend from England, Dr. Demi Hill, uh, Dr. Uh, Harry Oldfield, invented a special camera with which he was able to scan the bioenergy fields, which are otherwise uh, not visible to the naked human eye. So, this was his uh, photograph of natural mountain in Bosnia. Pointy mountain. And those energy fields are all horizontal. Look at green and blue and green and red and green and blue and green and red. Horizontal. This is a village in Serbia, Malakasta. You can see the roofs, the structures, energy fields, horizontal, green, blue, red, green, blue, red. This is my favorite place in the United States, Sedona, Arizona. Famous red rocks. And the most famous bell rock. It even looked like a self pyramid. Behind, we can see those bioenergy fields, all horizontal, blue and green and red, horizontal. Everywhere on this planet, horizontal energy fields. Cities, villages, <coughs> seas, Rivers, valleys, or almost everywhere. <laughs> the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun in Visal. All the energy fields are vertical. You know, in Bosnia, everything is upside down. <laughs> we cannot even have those energy fields right. The whole world, horizontal. We have to be different, <laughs> vertical. Why they are vertical? Look inside, red color, always associated with the energy. Energy is getting accumulated in the pyramid. And then it goes to the top, hitting those horizontal, they become vertical. 2015, 2007, Dr. Oldfield himself made the photo. Vertical. Once we got the technology, we started playing with it. So this is a panoramic photo. The town of Isoko, Pyramid of the Sun, and the light. Look at the town. This is Hotel Pyramid of Sunsa. Horizontal fields, like everywhere else. But the moment energy comes to the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun, and the light pyramid, it changes direction. We have vertical energy fields. What does it tell us? It tells us that Bosnian pyramids are energetically active pyramids. Every year I to go to Egypt, doing some lectures at universities, long time ago, at the University of Cairo. One time I had the most famous Egyptologists, archaeologists, professors, PhD students, what they teach their students is that pyramids were built in Egypt and ziggurats in Mesopotamia. And then I came, and then I started showing pictures of pyramids in Bolivia, in Peru, in Guatemala, Indonesia, Australia, Sudan, Mexico, Honduras, America. They were looking like this. <laughs> so after that, <laughs> Of course, they look so bad in the eyes of their students. After that, they never invited me to do more than <laughs> So, instead of going to universities, Cairo and Shams, Alexandria, I started taking groups from different sites, temples and pyramids. And I'm using this technology. This is Kafre or Kafre pyramid, the second largest in Egypt. Some of you probably remember those cover that still remains, beautiful white limestone blocks. Look at here, coming from right, 
Horizontal energy fields coming close to the pyramid. Vertical, vertical, left side, horizontal. This pyramid is also energetically active pyramid. Of course, I shared all this information with my Egyptian colleagues and other archaeologists and historians and those who are interested. And nothing. They told me, we don't care about the energy. <laughs> <laughs> These are tombs. Okay. How old are those and pyramids? They are covered by soil. If you can figure out the age of the soil, we could get to the minimum age of the structure below. The science that investigates soil is called pedology. In Bosnia, we have an institute for pedology who took samples from the sun and the moon pyramid. And we were told in their scientific article that the age of soil is up to 15,000 years. If the soil is 15,000, the structure below is even older. And then our two young Italian archaeologists, Niccolo Visconti and Riccardo Brett, by removing with the help of the volunteers soil from the sun pyramid, you can see the concrete blocks, and on the top of the concrete block, they discovered this brownish material, organic material. It's on the top of the structure, meaning it's going to give us, again, the minimum age of the structure. We did radiocarbon dating, the age is 24,800 years plus minus 200 years. So we go back for 25,000 years, and it is still a minimum age. If we could find a piece of organic material below the first row of blocks, <coughs> that for itself could give us exact age of the pyramid. And that's exactly what happened when our archaeological manager, Tim Moon from New Zealand, and his crew of volunteers, among them this guy from Canada, Below the first row of blocks and above the second, like in the sandwich, discovered organic material, fossilized leaves. How did they get there? The builders were pouring the concrete, the first row, the second row, the third row. The wind was blowing, bringing those leaves. And they placed the final row of blocks. And those leaves below will give us exact age of the construction. Radio carbon dating, the age 29,200 years plus minus 400 years. This is what's called radio carbon date. In order to get calibrated date or calendar age, we had about 14%. 33,600 years before present. 33,000 years. And what are we going to do now? <laughs> the first pyramids in Europe, the biggest on the planet, the most precise orientation to the north on the planet, the best quality concrete on the planet, the most extensive underground tunnel network on the planet. And now, the oldest pyramids on the planet. We change the history forever. Not in the small Bosnia, Croatia, Serbia, Balkan region, everywhere. So what did archaeologists, historians, cultural establishment do? Did they accept it enthusiastically? No. Do small countries, and especially non-profit, independent foundations, and small people change the history? Those who control the history control the present. These are not small guys or small countries. Elites, they have their pride, they think. British, French, German, of course, America. And they own Wikipedia, Encyclopedia Britannica, all the mainstream media. They think they can decide and they can keep the truth hidden from us. When, in the 19th century, Smithsonian Institute was established, the first task was to form teams who was going to be destroying 
all those mounds all around America. In Ohio, even today, we have 42,000 mounds. Among them, famous Ohio Serpent Mound. 42,000, originally 200,000. Across America, hundreds and hundreds of thousands. Today, just fraction remain. In an interview for newspapers from Chicago, 1884, the head of one thing was saying, yes, we are hired by Smithsonian Institute. Our task is to destroy all these mounds and to move all the artifacts found to Smithsonian. At that time, Washington, today Washington and New York. In the basement, in the huge warehouses. Public never got to see those artifacts. Among them, huge human skeletons, four to five meters, and so on. And then I realized the major museum institutions are there to hide the knowledge from us. Who are they to keep the cultural heritage from us people? Cultural heritage belongs to all of us, not to select a group of people. So what we're going to do now with the Boston Building Project, the oldest, the biggest, if you want to change all the history books, you know how much forest we need to cut to change those books? <laughs> this project is not very ecological, obviously. <laughs> Maybe that's the reason why they don't want to <laughs> The major question for all the structures is their true purpose. In our case, I became aware very early that archaeologists cannot help us. Historians, geologists, they cannot. Nobody teaches them in schools about the true purpose of pyramids. Of course, they tell them stories. Bedtime stories. <laughs> Pharaoh, princess, glory. We need science. We needed a real scientist, people with the scientific instruments, people who can measure, physicists, electrical engineers, sound engineers, telecommunication engineers, medical doctors, people who measure. If you can measure, you scientifically prove. You don't guess, oh, this piece is probably 2,000 or 5,000. So the team of physicists from Croatia came with their scientific instruments, Gauss intelligent wave, oscilloscope, spectrometer, they were calibrated, sensitive and precise, did measurements in different areas, different aspects, and concluding, top of the sun pyramid, top of the moon pyramid, top of the tumulus in Vratinsa, we have an energy beam, four and a half meter radius, 28 kilohertz frequency. Three months later, team from Serbia came with their scientific equipment, they did measurements, led by engineer Goran Marjanovic, and they confirmed the measurement of 28 kilohertz frequency on top of the pyramids. And then we have teams from Finland, sound engineer Heike Savolainen, Professor Libertolis from the University of Trieste, Italy, Professor Konstantin Meyer from Germany, and they all got the same results. <coughs> then in science, you have five independent teams from five different countries who come at five different periods and they bring their own equipment and they all got the same results, it is called an independent, international, scientific verification of the phenomenon. This phenomenon, this one right here, Bosnian pyramid of the sun, with this energy beam going through the top, which is 28 kilohertz frequency, which is electrical in nature, it starts at four and a half meter radius, which is continuous because we measure it in the spring and the summer and the fall and the winter, day and night. Mother Nature does not make hills with four sides, with four triangular faces, with four corners, with the best quality artificial concrete, with the perfect precision to the cardinal points, with the inner passageways, with the tunnels below, and 
with energy being like this one. We measure other natural hills, no energy beams. What we have here is more than the construction. This is the ancient technology. And then we measure the strength of the signal. At the ground, top of the sun pyramid, three meters higher, another three meters higher. Frequency remains the same, 28 kilohertz, but the strength here, 1.9 volt voltage. Here, 3.9, above, 8. So it was stronger and stronger. Now, if the source of the energy is inside the pyramid or below the pyramid, you would expect energy moves away, it should be getting weaker and weaker and disappear. But since everything is upside down in Bosnia, <laughs> our pyramids work differently. They become stronger and stronger and stronger. This is what's called scalar waves. Now, it is not forever stronger. It really is getting stronger and stronger and stronger, and then from four and a half meters going to 20 meters, and then reducing to four and a half, reducing the strength, and then again, four and a half, 20, four and a half, 20, and they move forever. Scalar waves. Our brilliant mind of Nikola Tesla was investigating this subtle phenomenon 125 years ago. In the last 50 years, Russian physicists, and they both concluded that the speed of the scalar waves is much, much bigger than the speed of light. Of course, the students have thought that uh, Albert Einstein, 100 years ago, said the biggest speed in the universe, speed of light, almost 300,000 kilometers per second. If you try to move quicker, you are going to dematerialize. Hmm. However, scale waves much, much quicker. Or, to be more precise, information within scalar fields move much quicker than the speed of light. Or, to be even more precise, for the scale waves, Time does not exist. If they are generated here, you can find it there. If this is one end of our galaxy, this is another one at the same time. And for the speed of light, it takes 40,000 years to go from one end of the galaxy to another. Now, Nikola Tesla did many experiments, especially with the Warden Cliff Tower in the state of New York. He was financed by the billionaire at the time, J.P. Morgan. <coughs> After a few experiments, he was writing in his diary, I found a way to send huge quantities of energy, thousands of horsepowers, between two cosmical bodies, two planets, regardless of their distance. So he found a way to send for free huge quantities of energy. He went to J.P. Morgan, and he heard that, he said, how I'm going to sell the free transportation of energy and make money. Tesla had noble goals to discover clean energy, unlimited sources of energy, and free energy. Instead, billionaires like J.P. Morgan or Rockefeller, or Rothschilds. What they did, they were using the energy sources that are dirty, that contaminate, that are limited, and very expensive. Coal, coal mines, dirty, contaminate, limited, and expensive. Oil and gas, dirty, contaminate. Oil tankers, spills, ecological catastrophes. Limited, very expensive. Nuclear energy contaminates from Chernobyl to Fukushima and back, very expensive. And based on those energy sources, they form this elite who owns today 95% of the resources of the planet. And 90% of humanity, which would include all of us here tonight, struggle to pay our bills from first of the month to the next first of the month. <coughs> but the time will come 
when the free energy will become available to all of us. And imagine the change. No more coal mines, no more oil field explorations, no more oil tankers, no more refineries, no more petrochemical industry, no more chemical industry, no more plastic bags, no more pharmaceutical industry based on oil. No more additives which poison our food. No more additives that poison our water and our liquids. No more elites yes. who made it. Who made their power based on such energy sources. Once we achieve free energy, that will be the first pillar of the free society. And the second pillar will be the free distribution of the resources. How can, within one species, some have hundreds of billions of dollars and some die from hunger and dirty water and curable diseases? We need fair society, free energy. Yes. It's not only the Bosnian period of the sun, which is energetically active. The Kukulkan pyramid filled during the storm. Energy beam was activated. The pyramid of the moon, Teotihuacan, energy beam. So, the first potential purpose of the pyramid energy is the communication device. Mm -hmm. Well, if this energy beam exists, where does it go? 90 degrees to the sky? Not really. We measure in the morning, move to the east. This is where our sun rises. At noon time, south, afternoon, southwest, evening, west. It follows the path of our sun. Does it mean that our planet communicates with our sun? It is possible. And then using the sun as the cosmic gate to communicate with other solar systems, technically possible, and with other galaxies. But the pyramids are not only transmitters. They are antennas. They receive the energy. So we have two flow energy, information, they go both ways. But if our planet is point A, where is point B? And where is point C? And where is point D? And all other points in this network, cosmic internet. <laughs> For the second purpose of period energy, we need to go to the Bosnian underground. Not political, which is very developed, <laughs> but archaeological. We go to the tunnels. In one of them, we are finding this, as we call it, mega big ceramic, artificially made, block K2. Here it is. It's sitting on this sandstone plate. It was obviously the support. If you have support, somebody placed this big block on top of it. Anthropogenic activities, like archaeologists would say. We used georadar, we checked it, left and right, back and forth to see what is inside the block. And then we were told on three spots we have all minerals, quartz crystals. Quartz crystal has three properties. Number one, to amplify the energy. Number two, to transform one form of the energy, in our case, electromagnetic field, to another form, in our case, ultrasound, through the process known as the piezoelectrical effect. And the third property, quartz crystal can store the information. Today, we use silicon-based Technology, a little bit of course, cell phones. But 
that silicon based. Of course, crystal can store up to one million times more information than silicium silicon based technology. So, very important mineral. Now, around this block, we've done a series of measurements using scientific instruments. Among other frequencies, we measure extremely low frequency, this is how it's called, ELF, of 7.83 hertz. In science, this frequency is called original Schumann resonance. Nikola Tesla, 125 years ago, thought that our planet resonates most probably at 8 hertz. Austrian von Schumann measured 7.83. This is the frequency that was around when we were born. So, our body, 7.33, when we think, if somebody is still doing that, when we think we create brain waves at 7.33, if you have outside planet 7.33, we are in balance, we are at home. However, in the last four years, so much bad technology Computers, laptops, microwaves, mobile phones, satellite dishes. Now we have Elon Musk with the 5,000 starling satellites. A lot of bad electromagnetic uh, fields. So what, what it does to the planet, especially in the big cities, it contaminates the space. EM smoke, it's called. So. In Sarajevo, half a million people, it's not 7.83 no more, it is 12 hertz. In Munich, a million people, it's 15 hertz. In the New Amsterdam, New York, <laughs> it is 18 hertz. Can I imagine? We go to the big city, and for some reason, we feel this stress. How come? We uh, at 7.83, big series 18, this balance causes the stress. And stress is the cause for 75% of our problems, health issues. It starts with the high blood pressure, then we go to the cardiovascular, and then we go on. <laughs> <laughs> we also used in, uh, another technology to scan this block, and we can see here the block, you can see a lot of indigo. When it comes to colors, what we can see, the lowest frequency you can see is red. Orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Seven colors. Of course, those seven colors today are the flag of LGBTIQ+. But scientifically speaking, this is what we have, the seven colors. So let me go. It vibrates very high, very high. What is our highest frequency? Our spirituality. Now, it's very important to define the term spirituality. When I went to school uh, in former Yugoslavia, they were teaching us spirituality. You know, it's bad. It is something about religions. <coughs> religions is one thing, and religious. Faith is another thing. Spirituality is another thing. For me, spirituality is development of spiritual senses. So you can sense the world beyond the physical reality. What is that? Physical reality we make based on our five physical senses. Which are, we can see eyesight, we can hear, we can smell, we can taste, and we can touch. Five physical senses. However, those five physical senses are so limited, and our reality is so limited. So spirituality should be something to enable us to see and feel much more. Why am I saying limited? For example, what we can hear is called sound. We hear from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz sound. As a matter of fact, as we are getting a little bit older, like few of us with the gray hairs, we hear less and less, 19, 18, 15. If you are married for 30 years, 
<laughs> and we don't hear our wives at all. And they don't hear us. Everything above 20 kilohertz is called ultrasound. We cannot hear it, but it doesn't mean that it does not exist. It does exist. It's very high, very high pitch. 21, I mean, 22, 28. Cats and dogs, they can hear a little bit more than us. But even then, they cannot hear 50 kilohertz, 100 megahertz, gigahertz. So what we don't hear is huge. On the other end, below 20 hertz, 15, 10, 8, 2, very deep sounds, we don't hear. We do not hear 99.3% of all sounds in the universe. We are deaf. <laughs> but we don't realize that. What you can see are the seven colors. They are less than 1% of what's really happening around us. Cats, for example. Here's a cat. His name was Leo. One evening I'm sitting watching TV, and Leo is sitting across, and he's watching me. Or well, I thought he was watching me, but when I was looking at his eyes, he was actually fixing something half a meter above my head. He's watching TV, he's watching. So I finally looked up there, I see nothing. But he fixed his you know, view, and then he started moving his head and the eyes in the air. I'm looking, I see nothing. He was seeing something, because he can see a little bit more than we can. What he was seeing, I can guess. Spirits, soul, ghosts, orbs, extraterrestrials, he was seeing something. So, our picture of physical reality is so, so, so different. Smell, I have three dogs. Dogs can smell so much more than we can. If some of you have dogs, you will probably know. Dogs can, male dog, can sense female, ready for the business. <laughs> Three kilometers away. And now we are going to the future where our young generation, young boys, won't smell good if she is half a meter away. <laughs> so, limited reality that we have. If we could develop some other senses, it will give us opportunity to actually see much more. I call that spiritual senses. Those of you who visited the Bosnian pyramids, you remember that uh, during the first visit, our guide would ask you, why don't you open your hand and keep a little bit about this block? And tell us if you can feel something. And sure enough, in a few seconds, the majority of the people say, hey, I feel some tingling in the fingers. It's a little bit warm. It's like a little energy going through my hands. We are feeling the energy. That will be the first rudimentary spiritual sense. And you know, when you go to some healer, they are saying, okay, I can heal you, lay down, they are doing something with their hands above us. They are manipulating our energy field, feeling the energy. We can also see the energy, but nobody teaches them that. You don't have teachers to teach us how to see the energy, how to go, for example, to the forest, open your hand, you can feel the energy of the tree, then you move back a few steps, then you're looking on the sides, and with the two or three months practice, you can start feeling the vibration, you start feeling the energy, wow. This is much more than just the physical part of the tree that we can see. We are much more than physical part of ourselves. We are seven energy fields around us. We are actually radius from eight to ten meters. You know, sometimes we drive the car, we start at the traffic light, and there are three lanes, and then we look at the person in the other car. Immediately that person is looking at us. How is it possible? We never, we never call that person. Our energy fields communicate. Or sometimes you meet the person for the first time in your life. But somehow it is very dear to you. It is like you know this person all your life or previous life. 
or you meet another person and it's something, some bad energy coming from that person. I mean, the poor guy, he didn't do nothing to you, but uh, <laughs> energies communicate. We are much more than the physical body. So we can see even you know, the energies. We can see the colors of the energy. You know, by energy field, how you feel. You live in a society where the words are so important. People come to us and tell us, hey, I am the most beautiful, I am the modest guy in the world, I am the, the, and then we believe, or not. But imagine that we can see the colors of energy fields, and you would realize that certain colors mean something. For example, if you have dominant red color, hmm, this guy is either violent or aggressive, something is wrong there. <coughs> if it is green or blue, healing, sharing, love energy. If it is white, wisdom, meditation. <laughs> so if you could see the energies, then the person does not need to tell us anything. We can see what kind of person he or she is. We can see the chakras and colors of chakras. We can exchange thoughts. Nobody teaches us that. But every one of us has the potential to exchange thoughts. Telepathy is a spiritual sense. 30 something years ago, when I went to live to, uh, in the US, Houston, Texas, then, you know, I would call my parents once a week. So before I call them first, I'm thinking, hey, it's time to call them. So I created a thought which goes out to the universe. So two minutes later, I go to the phone, you know those old phones, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> so I call, my father answers the phone, oh, your mother told me two minutes ago that you are going to call. <laughs> How did she know? Well, when I created the thought, it went out, who's the best antenna in our life? Our mothers. <laughs> <laughs> they know everything. <laughs> Telepathy. Telekinesis is another spiritual sense. We can move objects with the power of our mind. Teleportation, movement through space and time, is also something that we have potential for. One of the forms is astral projections. It is when your soul leaves your body and goes to places. During the Cold War, 60s, 70s, 80s, all parties, the US, different intelligence services, Soviet Union, KGB, Czechoslovakia, France, Bulgaria, they were all working with the gifted people. They wanted to know what's happening on the other side. So they were using, among other things, remote viewing. This is when you go to the other side, you go, let's say, to Moscow, to Kremlin, on the meaning of the Politburo, and they are discussing nuclear weapons, so you can hear what they are discussing. So, only at the end of the Cold War, we realized that those agents started writing in the books what they were writing. We started realizing about our true potentials. Military has it all. So, if, for example, we want to check what they tell us in the books, 1799, Napoleon Bonaparte, he went and conquered the Egypt. He spent the night in the Great Pyramid of Egypt, came back next morning very upset. Instead of reading it, how about we go back for 225 years? And then we see in Egypt, if this short guy was really in existence, if he had spent night there or not. Or we go 2,000 years back, Cleopatra, the sixth, let's see if she was really so beautiful like everybody's saying. And once we start moving through time and different space, then we start thinking, hey, I see, I know who I am, but this is not my physical body. My physical body is laying over there on the couch. So it seems that my physical body is gone, and it is for one news only. I will still have this. And what is this? A soul. A soul. It seems that soul is immortal. And if it is immortal, why would I be fearing death? 
Once we remove the fear of death, then we remove all other major fears. Why should we be afraid to leave the job? If we get a boss who's a jerk, who's yelling at us every day, we just say, goodbye. I'm leaving the company. You go find something else. You lose the money, you cannot pay the loans and mortgages, and fine. You move from the big crowd to a little bit smaller, but you do what you like to do. Then we lose all our fears. And we realize that we have no limits. And that's exactly the definition of the freedom. No limits, no fears. Freedom. Imagine that we are all free. And 10 more million people around us are free. And 60 more in the Netherlands. <laughs> and 400 more in the EU. Once we are free, the politicians will lose the base to control and to manipulate. And then the politics will become what is supposed to be, service to all of us. So, neutrality, very important. It seems that pillary energy can affect the development of our spirituality. In the other block, K1, so we go to the next aspect of the pyramid energy. You can see a lot of red color, red, low frequency, but it penetrates our body, affecting our blood circulation, blood flows better to all alveoles. We are healthier, healthier, healing. Next aspect of pyramid energy. This girl from Slovakia, Veronica, she would have big problems because of her low lung capacity. She was using only 47% of her lungs. When she was walking, it was like this. <laughs> low lung capacity. For three years, she was trying different therapies. She was trying different drugs. Pharmaceutical industry, they had pills, they had... Nothing was helping. You know, for pharmaceutical industry, it's not the goal to cure, to cure us. It's not their goal for us to be healthy. Because if we are healthy, we are not customer. If we are dead, we are not customer. But if we live long enough to use many, 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 many pills, then we are good customer. So anyway, she could not solve her problem. So she came to the tunnel for 10 days. Going to the tunnels in the morning, in the afternoon, one hour. Next day, one hour in the morning, one hour in the afternoon. After 10 days, she went back to Bratislava to get checked, and now she was using 84% of her lung. And this September, she came back to volunteer with us. She was pushing the wheelbarrow. Before, it was not imaginable for her. Being from Prague, medical nurse, six patients, they measure about 20 different parameters. This is the blood pressure. This is the glucose in the blood. So this guy here, Yirka, he had sugar 7.8. Now, sugar from 3 to 6, it's normal. 6 to 10, it's a risky group, it's a little bit high. About 10, diabetes, no good. So Yirka, 7.8, that's a little bit high. He went to the tunnels, came back, 5.1. Dropped for almost three points. Well, medical doctors can argue, well, yeah, he was walking 45 minutes and the sugar is dropping naturally. Okay, fair enough. Carl, he was at 10.5 after 45 minutes, 5.7. Extreme case, 20 or 25. Bad. That beats. First entrance. Second entrance, from 20 to 5, there is no pharmaceutical drug <laughs> to reduce sugar for so much with no side effect. First day, second day, third day, fourth day, he went back to Prague, 5.2, then 6.7. Why? Two weeks later. Because he went back to the place that really originates his problems, to the stressful atmosphere, to bad food, he has not changed himself. 
get a chance. This woman from Turkey, she was getting very high blood pressure. 220 over 135. You can imagine the migraines. In the last few years, she's been coming to Bosnia, to tunnels. This is the entrance to the tunnels. And blood pressure never goes above 140 over 90. This gentleman, his name is Andreas. He is from Austria, Vienna. You know, men, some of men, uh, when they turned 40, 50, they started getting problems with the prostate. And some get the prostate cancer. It was his case. Doctors in Vienna told him immediately, you need to undergo surgery and start with the chemo therapy. He said, no, I'm going to the Bosnian pyramid tunnels. <laughs> and the doctor said, Bosnian what? <laughs> so he came for a month, going twice a day, and drinking pyramid water. I'll talk about it later. Water in the tunnels. After two months, let's see what happened. Some sound, help. Can somebody read the lips? <laughs> the guy asked him what happened, and he's explaining it's because I'm going to the tunnels and drinking the pyramid water, and after two months, I had no tumor. I went to Vienna, and the doctor, who was one of the famous urologists in Vienna, he didn't know why it didn't happen. That's okay. So let them believe me, finally. <laughs> <laughs> and then they realized that uh, pyramid energy might affect another aspect of our life. Besides the physical, as you probably know, the Eastern traditions, China, Tibet, India, they talk about energetical body. Peter, how you feel in the chakras. It's very hard to prove that, but a brilliant Russian physicist, Professor Konstantin Karotko from the University of St. Petersburg. He invented an instrument to measure those energy fields. It's called BioBell. So we measure energy fields around the human body before entering the tunnels. So this person, when you look in this blue energy field, you can see that pieces are missing, it's been damaged, missing. Why? Because of the stress. We all live stressful lives, more or less. It affects our protective shield. She went inside, she was in bad shape, 23 joules, very low level of energy. They were not experienced because we have measured 5,450 people before entering the tunnels and after coming back. More than 90% improvement. So she came back. Look at her energy field now, beautiful, refreshed. Energy level, 58 joules. Balance from 89 to 100 percent. This person, with her chakras, seven chakras, were relatively good balance. Ideally, they should go on the one line. But it happens so rarely. Usually, chakras are here, there, the stress. The only thing, the size can be a little bit improved. And look after the tunnels to the right, the size three, four, five times bigger, much more open, meaning energy flow better, affecting all our aspects, physical, blood, intellectual, emotional, spiritual, every aspect of our life. It's all connected. Stress level, seven persons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This was their stress level before the tunnel, and the red one 
after the time. You see how the stress level dropped. And here we have several parameters. The bar is before the tunnels, pressure, after the tunnels is what? Energy towards 46 to 70. The left and right symmetry, they are good before and after. Organs balance, they are good before and after. But in general, all elements are improved. Italian doctor Simone Zoccarato came on early and he wrote electronic microscope and he was doing live blood test. So he was checking red blood cells and white blood cells before and after the tunnels. This is the case after the tunnels. And this is the case when there is a problem with the red blood cells. If they are all nice, spherical, circular, like those here, it's a good case. If they started changing, they become oval, they break, not good. If they are one next to each other, barely touching each other, it's good. If they are one on top of each other, not good. If they leave enough room for the white blood cells to attack toxins, good. And then through the blood, liver, out of the body. So pyramid energy affects our blood. Why is that happening? We always say that we are not in the healing business. You know, health is very delicate. And we don't give medical guarantees. Our foundation is registered for archaeology, scientific research, archaeological theories, not for the medical research. But we measure what we have measured in the thermos absence of five harmful radiations. Every day we are exposed to the cosmic radiation. Some of them are harmful for our body. They attack our body, our body cells fight those enemies. In the tunnels, 20 meters below the ground, no harmful cosmic radiations, no enemies. Second one, natural radioactivity coming from the underground attacking our body. Well, we measure radioactivity using Geiger-Miller counters. And the values are dozens of times lower than the minimum allowed. No bad radiations. No geopathogenic radiations. These are Hartmann intersections, Curry intersections, Schneider intersections, all neutralized. These are bad energy from underground water flows, neutralized. No signal for the mobile phone. 3G, no 4G, <clears throat> no 5G. This is a picture I made in Brisbane, Australia, a few years back. You see how they put palm tree, artificial palm trees, so it is more friendly. <laughs> 5G. You know, before we talk on the mobile phone, this is how our head looks like. Green, always associated with the health, good health. And this is the head after 15 minutes, talking on the phone, keeping it here, by the ear, all red. Red, is <coughs> going on. So, in 15 minutes, we know that our hand becomes warm, Keeping the phone. Our ear is all red and it burns 150,000 brain cells. One phone call. However, some people may argue, oh, I don't care, I have 6 billion brain cells. <coughs> well, yes. But 8 o'clock in the morning, 150,000. 10 o'clock, 100,000. No time, 200,000. Afternoon, 100 to today, 1 million. Tomorrow, another million. And another million. And very soon, we notice that we cannot remember the stuff. That we process the information slower and slower. 
and that we become less and less intelligent, to put it mildly. Less intelligent, easier to control. <coughs> the tunnels, no signal for the Wi-Fi. So no bad radiations whatsoever. For the first time in our life, when you enter the tunnels, no enemies. Our body cells can start doing their job. What is their job? To fix the problems in our body. To start the regeneration process. To start the detoxication process. And we measure five additional energy properties. One, I already mentioned, original Schumann resonance. Then, 28 kilohertz frequency, that's the frequency from the planet. Our planet is our mother, and she can only give us the good stuff. And then, we measure 28 kilohertz frequency in ultrasound. How come? Because electromagnetism is hitting quartz crystal, and we are getting ultrasound, 28 kilohertz, which is the levitation frequency. We feel light in the tunnels. And using some of the instruments shown here, especially this one here, we realize that we have high negative ion concentration in the tunnels. This instrument is called air ion counter. We have two of them, we measure daily. Now, negative ions are very beneficial, and uh, they represent some extra electrons in atoms or molecules. They are negatively charged, and they are free in the atmosphere. What they need is something that's positively charged. They need a partner. And positively charged is a dust. Negative, positive, attract each other, they become heavy, drop to the floor. So negative ions clean the atmosphere from dust, from smoke, from pollen, from microbes. And microbes are viruses, bacteria, fungi. More negative ions, less microbes, better for us. In this conference hall, when you came here a couple of hours ago, we had about 50 negative ions per cubic centimeter. When I let you go home, <coughs> approximately 2.30 a.m. in the morning, <laughs> it is about 10 negative rounds per cubic centimeter. You don't be sleeping. But you go outside, it's refreshing, 150. You go to the mountain, 1,000. Pine tree forest. Very refreshing. Very healthy. You go to the Bosnian pyramid tunnels in the summer. From 20,000 to 50,000. 50 times healthier than on the top of the mountain. And the winter time, 200,000, even more. So far, people believe that the highest concentration is the Niagara Falls, between Canada and the US. Falls, waterfalls, very refreshing. A lot of negative ones. 100,000. I personally measured in Great Zimbabwe. <coughs> megalithic towers. The storm started 100,000. And just last week, the colony telling me that, that we measured 340,000 negative ions per cubic centimeter. Those 10 elements together, absence of bad radiations and presence of excellent energies, create the safest and the healthiest place on the planet. <laughs> this nice 94 years old lady came to the tunnels recently. And uh, she said, listen, I heard that the tunnels are good. But I said, yeah, listen, uh, people are saying that they are. <laughs> and she said, is it going to help me? I said, well, why don't you go inside and try? 
So she went inside. She stayed for one hour. And then she came back. <laughs> Now remember, I said, no guarantee. <laughs> water gives us life. We found water in five tunnels on the body and one of the pyramids. This water is crystal clear and clean. It's on surface water, it's 25 meters below the ground. During the summer and it's dry, the water level does not drop. During the winter, spring, a lot of rain, snow melting, it does not go up. So it's been there for thousands of years. You would expect that water is green, full of, full of algae and microbes. No, beautiful. We did microbiological and chemical analysis. It's healthy. We sent samples to late Dr. Masaru Moto in Japan, who became very popular in the 1990s and later. He was freezing different samples of water, <coughs> minus 20 degrees Celsius, and then he was filming them through the electronic microscope. Then he realized different samples, different molecular structure. If the water was exposed to good elements, it would show a real nice geometrical structure. If not, looking bad. This is the tap water, the city water from New York City. Now the medical authorities are convincing us our water is good. No viruses, no bacteria, no fungi. True, because it has been treated with the chlorine, which is, I didn't say poison, you did. <laughs> in our water, we catch it somewhere in the mountains. Through the metal pipes, it goes and melts the metal. We drink traces of heavy metals. In our kitchens, it comes through plastic pipes. It melts plastic. We drink plastic, traces of heavy metals. So, in the last few years, the medical studies are showing that the majority of the cancers are caused by the plastic particles, the plastic. Water that we drink is energetically dead. No structure, no shape. This is the water from the dam in Japan. Water going through those generators. And it looks like this. Probably we would look like this if we go through this. <laughs> Contaminated lake in Japan. Lake Biwa. Ugly structure. This is the water from the town of Isoko, where the pyramids were found. But treated water, look, ugly. We took samples from our pyramid water. We sent it to Japan 10 years ago. At that time, you could still send samples of liquid. You go to the post office, what you have, I have this bottle, no problem, put it in the box, boom, it goes. Today, you come with the liquid to the post office, I want to send this. Terrorist! <laughs> okay, so, we sent it. Now, this water went, of course, to the airport. Ran the machine. Ran the bad, you know, radiations. It went to Frankfurt International. Ran again. It went to Tokyo. Ran again. But it's still, the water from the pyramid kept its beautiful hexagonal shape. And look at it crystal-like structure, just by looking at it. This is energetically alive water. I call it happy water. Water that vibrates high. What do you mean vibrates high? Well, Tesla said, if you want to find out the secrets of the universe, you need to view them through the energy, frequencies, and vibrations. Our project in Bosnia is not an archaeological project. Our project is energy. The pyramids amplify the energies. Our project are very specific frequencies that are beneficial and that cause our vibrations to go up. 
when we are sad, when we are angry, when we are upset, we vibrate low. When we are violent, very low. But when we have love for the whole world, we vibrate high. What's the purpose of our life? Last hundred years, Western world is teaching us purpose. Consumerism, you have to have more, you have to make more money, you have to have bigger houses. You have... Yes, but then you are still empty. But if you share, if you give, if you love, if you are loved, you vibrate high. That's the purpose of our life. Not to grab, because we will never have enough. But to vibrate high sincerely. Nobody needs to tell you about the person. You just look at it. The feeling you have from this brain, brain number one, brain number two, will tell you everything. <laughs> the volunteers are coming every year. This year, June, July, August, September, October. In that little flyer that you got, you have the website, bosnianpyramids.ba. If you want to come to volunteer, go to the website. It's going to give you instructions. But in general, you can stay as long as you want. A couple of months, no problem. Three days, no problem. And of course, the beauties of our little, but really special country. I came from states where I had successful business, 120 employees, to live in Bosnia. Has to be a good reason for that. <laughs> First day, we show archaeological sites, pyramids, tunnels, and second day, <laughs> <laughs> they get tools in their hands, helping us clearing the pyramid and the tunnels, and this year, tumors. In the last 15 years, 3,750 volunteers from 64 countries and six continents truly international project and they are having fun nobody else gives them the opportunity <laughs> to discover stuff you can't go to egypt and start digging the pyramids <laughs> there or china or peru or mexico but you can in bosnia under supervision <laughs> the youngest eight years old he came with his parents the oldest 84 years old he came with his children. <laughs> In 2018, our non-profit foundation has attracted 40,000 visitors to Bosnia Pyramids, Visoko, and Bosnia Herzegovina. It has really never been on the map, touristic map, archaeological map. Now we are placing it there. And basically, with no financial support from the government, whatsoever. We go, we promote, we invite people. I'm just doing a tour of 11 countries in Europe. Czech, Slovakia, Germany, Sweden, Denmark, Netherlands, Belgium, tomorrow evening, Vienna, Austria, Slovenia, Croatia, Serbia. We invite people to come. And we love when they come. We really appreciate that. 2019, 50,000, 2020, 76, 21, 135, 2022, 150. Last year, almost 200,000 visitors. We are very proud of them. A lot of them keep coming back three, four times during one season. In a few years, half a million. In 10 years, a million. If humanity is still around. <laughs> 36 official guides, we train them. Young people, <coughs> smiling, happy to be there. We open every day of the year, 365 days. You don't need to call us. Hello, tomorrow is Sunday, are you going to be open? <laughs> yes, we are open. <laughs> Hello, tomorrow is Monday, all the museums are closed, are you going to be open? Yes, we are going to be open. <laughs> Hello, tomorrow is Christmas Day. Are you going to be open? Yes. Hello, tomorrow is New Year's Day. Anybody's drunk? Are you going to be open? <laughs> Let me repeat. 
<laughs> Tomorrow is New Year's Day. Everybody is going to be drunk. I'm going to be open. <laughs> you don't drink from, from the New Year's Day? <laughs> we do in Bosnia. Well, anyway, we open every day because we take tourism very seriously. This is what we live from. People come, they help us with the tickets, the panels, some pyramid, buy a few souvenirs. Not much money, but it helps. People come volunteer, it helps. And then in the last 10 years, we decided to start buying properties near the towns. So we spent all my savings from Houston, Texas, and purchased almost 100,000 square meters of neglected, swampy, muddy land. It's a lot of garbage, which is nothing new in Bosnia. But now we are proving that the opposite is possible. Neglected land turned into one of the most beautiful parks ever. So, in the park we have more than 60 installations. We planted a lot of trees and plants, water fountains, labyrinths of love and energy, children playground. Every year, more than 100 schools come into us. Entrance to the park is for free. Costs us a lot of money. And still does for the maintenance. Parking lots are for free. We pay them. We don't charge them. I know it sounds impossible. We park across the street. How much we pay? Five and twenty dollars. <laughs> Toilets are for free for the kids. Installations, children playground, we give them for free because we love children to come. And they visit the tunnels, they see all other people, and they're very happy. We even clean after they are gone next morning. Classical, music concerts, lectures, book promotions, once a year, we organize humanitarian event. We bring the kids without the parent, without the parental love, which is the hardest. And we bring also the most famous athletes. This is our NBA player in the Phoenix Sun. This is John Musa. He plays for Real Madrid and the others. And for one day, we play with them, take photos with them. We give them our love. They don't forget them. We build souvenir shops and we rent these spaces to the local community, to the local vendors. Of course, we could have five shops all by ourselves, but that's not the idea. We are not there for the money. We share. What we learn is you share, you are going to have. Somebody will take care of you. Free concerts, water fountains, Park of Flowers, Geopunctual Circle, Labyrinth of Love, Aura Field Amplifier. <coughs> no sound, but at least you can see how the park looks like. <coughs> this is how it looked like before, Madeleine. Swamp. <coughs> Entrance to one of the tunnels, Tunnel Rame. We built tennis courts, beach volleyball, basketball, art, different labyrinth, yoga stages, meditation stages, concert stages, spirals, very house, energy eight, labyrinth of love. Sculptors at work in the park, pavilions with different statues, art again, phototherapy, our flag, love, peace, freedom, folklore, these are from Bulgaria. Before and after. Greenery everywhere. 
no government money. We've been relying on governments who collect the money from the people. But first they take care of themselves for thousands of years. If you think that something's going to be changed for us, think twice. However, even without the government money and the funds and the budget and the IPA funds, that we can materialize our visions with enthusiasm, with the will, it's going to happen. And then we realize we build a place like this and maybe 10 more in Bosnia, 20 in Serbia, 15 in Germany, 100 in the US, and then we changed the world. Our destiny is in our hands. Yes. I don't have much to offer you as far as the books and literature. We have just a few copies of the German book. Maybe our, our 200, maybe one or two of the stands, but German is what you understand, you are happy to uh, get it, I'll sign it for you. And you got this flyer with the website, bodenpianist.ca. You can learn more about the project, more about volunteering, and if you want, you can join me once a year, and only once a year, I organize tours. This year it will be for the summer solstice. June 16th, June 23rd, I'm going to be host with uh, other of my guys, and people have a blast. You're going to see all the pyramids, sun, and the moon, and the dragon, and the tumulus, and the stone balls, and the park, and all the tunnels, going to tunnels several times, in the evenings you're going to have festivals, so it will be fun. But I suggest you come when you can come. We have wonderful people here who also organize the trips, here in the Netherlands also, I'm very proud when I see all those people. I see people who write books about our project. Yesterday, Iris, she was in Belgium. A few days before that, Afke Duma from a book in Dutch. Before that, Lee Jasperson in Copenhagen. So these are three countries I visited, and I see people who write about it. My heart is huge, and I'm so proud and humble and I see that the good intentional people want to help this project, but actually to help ourselves. Everything we do, it has energy stand. Even when we do sport, when we are opening our tennis court, tennis stadium, which we built with no government help. Thousands of people, 75 media, and the best tennis player ever. <laughs> Now, have in mind, he's from Serbia, I'm from Bosnia, and we've been having troubles among our nations in the last 150 years, totally unnecessary. But we are showing instead of hatred, there are other ways, cooperation, friendship, sincerity, love. This is the powerful messages that we are sending from our park and our location. We started in 2005 and 2006 as the archaeological project, which we expanded to different scientific disciplines, and then energy aspect, and then spiritual aspect, and then healing aspect, and with the park, cultural, sports, nutrition, recreation, art. We are offering different concept of the future. Last few years, they are telling us new Western values, transhumanism, GMO, treated water, poison everywhere, spraying us from the sky, Upgraded humans, digital ID, digital money, biochip, full control, and manipulation. They think they can turn us on and off when they want. 
We are saying no. Our concept means harmony among us back to the humanity and harmony with the nature. Thank you very much.